Hi guys and welcome to Airability, your regular dose of lead therapy. And I'm sorry there hasn't been some content for a little while, but I haven't been top of the shop. But I'm all better now and raring to go. A lot of questions I get around about setting up and fitting telescopic sights to your rifle. So today I thought I'd take you guys through how I go about fitting a telescopic sight to a rifle. And I'm going to be using Jason Lockett's um, RTI Priest here. So some of the actions are going to be truncated because I try to keep my videos around about 10 minutes long, 10, 15 minutes long, so people don't get bored. Now, let's get started. What type of scope am I going to fit? Well, I'm going to fit this Vector Sentinel X. Here you go. This is a custom, this is a, a Benchrest uh, scope. It's been customized for Benchrest use. It's very cheap. It comes in at around 200 pounds. It's a great performer for the money. And yes, you could win tournaments with this. It also, the review I did on this is my most popular video I've ever done. So if you pop to the description, you can see a review on this scope as well. So why don't we see how I go about fitting one of these scopes to a rifle. Before we start, we're going to go through a few of the essential tools that you need when you are setting up a scope on a gun. Obviously, very spirit levels. I'm very detail oriented, so I have several levels and I take the average of all the levels because I'm just like that to make sure I love to see as many levels on the level as possible. And to be complete geek at the end of the whole process, we'll see if it matches the plumb line at the end of the garden. Now, as a plumb line, I used my barrel cleaning pull through and I just hook it over a magnet at the end of the garden and it hangs lovely as a plumb line. So you don't even have to buy or make one. Most people will have one already. So some of the tools that you need. Top screwdriver, best thing ever. It will save you wrecking um, nuts and bolts on scopes and any other things because you will be able to tighten them to the exact manufacturer's recommended tightness. So this is an absolute essential if you're serious about your air gunning. Um, obviously various bits and as I said before spirit levels and mounts. So as I said before this spirit level has been leveled with the action of the gun. So when I remove all these spirit levels I can now tell when the gun is going to be level because if that spirit level that I set if I move it to be level the whole gun is going to be level because I've verified that with spirit levels on the Picatinny rail and on the action before I set it up now what scope am I going to be using so I'm going to be using the Vector Sentinel X as I said now as you can see here I've already had it on a rifle and I've got a bubble level on it already now this makes life really easy if you get that bubble level right with the crosshairs on the gun it makes it really easy setting up on new rifles but I'm not going to use that today so I'm not cheating I'm going to put a bit of tape over it and we'll take it off at the end to see if it matches up and um, everything matches up with the plumb line the end of you know the level at the end and all that lot also I put a bit of tape on here which gives me a rough idea of where I like the eyepiece to be on a scope and I've measured it from the butt of the gun now first of all we're going to put these we're going to have to um, I'll pause for a moment while I take these bolts out right guys so what I did there in the short interlude was I separated the top from the bottom of the scope mounts to enable me to fit the tube into the mounts now then we need to put these mounts onto the um, onto the rifle and we just put them on nice and loose and, and finger tight to begin with and what I like to do is to try and get the scope roughly level with the um, with the uh, mounts being symmetrical each side of the of the turret so at the moment I'm just trying to um, put the scope roughly where I like it I'm gonna, gonna I'm 
we're going to have a short interlude where I pick eight screws up and two tops of scope mounts. I'm absolutely devastated with my four par. See you in about 20 minutes. So here we go. With the help of my magnetic diver, I've managed to pick up all eight bolts in less than 20 minutes. I'll put them carefully over there for later use. So what I was saying was I'm going to, as a rough guide, I'm going to line the end of the scope up with a tape mark of where I usually like the end of my scope to be. I put the, the mounts on hand tight and I try and get them roughly equidistant, equidistant on the um, scope away from the turret so it looks balanced on the rifle. Yeah? Cool. Right. Um, where am I at now? This is, this is really quite difficult for me. So, yes, we've got these. Um, what I usually do for level, to get the level is, I only start with one mount. And I do like to get some screws in this quite quickly in case the scope drops off and I damage it. So as soon as we get a couple of safety scopes in, safety screws in, there you go. Even a few turns on one of the screws will stop the scope crashing to the ground like the screws did earlier. And that's the last thing you want. Also, when you're tightening these screws up, at the moment I'm just looking for very, just about touching the tube, barely touching the tube. There, and I've still got movement in the, in the thing here. One thing to bear in mind, the gaps at the side of the, um, I'll just take a photo while we're talking. The gaps at the side of the um, scope here, it's good to keep them even, both sides. And remember, you're not meant to close these gaps. I've seen some idiots tighten the scopes up so tight, they've closed the gaps on the scope rings. And they actually crimp the scopes. You don't do that. What you do is you use a um, torque screwdriver. And the usual setting for a scope ring is around two newton meters so what we're going to do now is we're going to see if we can level the scope off um see if we can level the scope off and then start to tighten this one ring so it doesn't move a couple of things you need to remember when you tighten the ring you need to go around all the screws evenly because it can actually pull the scope off off center when you are um tightening one side more than the other so it's just about having and um, being careful taking your time so let's start tightening the screws and leveling it off right i'm back so we set the distance that the scope needs to be from your eye i've just got down on it here and check that's absolutely fine we now need to level the scope with the rifle left to right and how we do this is we've already remember put the uh, locked in spirit level on the front of the gun and now have a spirit level on the top of the turret most scopes with flat turrets will be made to a uh, standard where that that um the, the top um of the turret will be plumb so it's usually a good idea to use that for starters to get things roughly right um, so what I now do is I now look down the gun to make sure it's level and then I put that in the middle and I use the bit out of the screwdriver and I, and I finger tight um, diagonally on here just enough to start getting it to nip just enough to start getting it to nip as you can see here and then we check it here and actually i think i've been very lucky that's bob on i am i'm looking down here i'm looking at the the spirit level i've got a little spirit level on the action here i've got a spirit level at the end I've got a spirit level on the top and the all same
to match up bang on with my plumb line now the main problem now is to get these bolts to tighten up on here without disturbing um, what you've done I'll be back in a minute absolutely spot on I've double checked the spirit level at the front of the gun the little spirit level I've got here and now it's time for the big reveal is the spirit level on the scope still level when I pull this off and the answer is hang on a minute I've knocked it I'll level them all up yes if I level it all up all three of them up it's bob on so that's basically how to do it so what I'm going to do now is the important bit is tighten things up to um, the required tightness so first of all these nuts here on the rail should be about four newton meters um, on your torque screwdriver and then we'll we'll put this second ring on here let me have a look oh come on there must be one more screw here there you go there's one more screw and we'll put that on there like that we'll finger tighten these up i'll take that off for now in case i knock it we've got the scope on we've got the um spirit level on the scope that we know is exactly um lined up with the crosshairs because i've done it previously and the idea is to um where are we at Right, so I finger tightened it all. It's at the right, right length here, front to back. Um, we will um, start looking at tighten this up. I've set the screwdriver to two newton meters, and I go around doing alternate diagonal screws about about a quarter of a turn after I feel that it bites and um, it's quite difficult sorry doing it on camera and we should start hearing some clicking soon there you go that's that scope ring done remember to come back in a few weeks to make sure there's no slippage and we do the same here we'll go around all the screws here there you go And essentially that's it your scope's fitted so now for a final check I'll just move back here I'll just line myself up with the gun I will make sure that the um, front sight front bubble levels level I will have a look on the plumb line bob on so there you go so remember guys don't over tighten your screws um always fit it within recommended manufacturers tolerances use as many spirit levels on as many places as you can think of to double check and verify your results um That's what I do, kind of take an average of it, use a plumb line with the rifle perfectly level to make sure that the crosshairs line up vertically 
and you shouldn't have any bother the only thing i would say is the next bit is setting up your focus on your reticle and i know i bang on about this put a pure white piece of paper down the end of the end of the line and take your time and focus this eyepiece so your eye is completely relaxed at distance view and the reticle is as, as crisp and as clear as you can get it after that it's all down to the side parallax focus here to whatever distance you're shooting at what i also would say is that sometimes you don't know if scopes have been touched out of the box or you bought a second hand scope and and somebody's been fiddling with it and cranked it up left or right so i always start sighting a minute about 10 meters so i don't have any wild wild shots you know what i mean but other than that it's quite easy just take your time and um enjoy yourself it's one of my most favorite things to do put new scopes on i think it's a bit of an adventure anyway until next time guys remember get out there live that air gun dream subscribe to the channel join the facebook group and enjoy the community take care then bye bye